My name is Jeff Thompson. I've been flying balloons since I was in high school. I live in Orlando, Florida, run a hot air balloon ride operation called Thompson Air. We fly in the Disney area seven days a week at sunrise. When I was 13, I grew up in Des Moines, Iowa, and I kind of caught the balloon bug when my parents took us as a family to go watch the U.S. National Balloon Championships. In Iowa, there weren't too many national championship events except for hog farming and corn growing, so they hauled us all down there at 5 o'clock in the morning, and I sat there in the crowd, 13 years old, and watched this balloon literally inflate, launch, and fly right over the top of our heads. And I just thought that was the coolest thing. So I went home and I started building model balloons out of tissue paper and cellophane tape and flying them. And at one time I actually built a 17 foot tall tissue paper balloon and used it to fly my bicycle. The ripe old age of 15, I started my flight training. Solo flew a balloon and 16 years old got my pilot license. Ironically, before I had a driver's license for a car. At 17 years old, I bought my first hot air balloon and took my mother and father for their very first balloon flight. Most parents won't drive with their 17-year-old child, and I had mine 1,000 feet in the air in a wicker basket. If you ever know a child that has a hobby, and it doesn't matter what it is, that kid knows more about that crap than you ever thought possible. Well, I was that kid, and ballooning was it. I could tell you the manufacturer of the balloon just by the shape in this kind. I, I knew that much about how they were built and how they were done. I could tell you who it was, the sound of the burner. I could tell you who it was. I mean, imagine being in high school and having your own hot air balloon. And so I would ask the girls if they'd like to come help me get it up this weekend. Got in all kinds of trouble. Well, I, I get out of bed about 3.30 in the morning. We start with a weather check and look at what's going on in the area, what's going on around the area. And unlike most weather information, we have to build a three-dimensional chart of what the atmosphere is doing. The only control we have on a balloon is up and down. By changing our altitude, we can find layers of wind moving slightly different directions and different speeds. For me, anyway, just heating the balloon up and getting it ready to fly I'm already starting to get a sense of how this balloon's gonna fly. Did I have to heat it up a lot to get to buoyancy? Did I have to heat it up a little bit? And that tells me how this thing's gonna fly today. And the first four or five minutes, you're paying huge attention to how this thing's flying because once you get airborne, you've gotta fly it. And for 17. I don't know if you saw some of the pictures. We actually wore helmets for the first four or five years. That's how you flew a balloon. The burners were so weak that if you hit the burner, it would take you four or 500 feet to pull out of a descent. So what you did was you eased your way down until you were just above the trees, put your helmet on, and then as soon as you saw a hole big enough you thought you could fit the balloon, shut down the burner, open up the top of the balloon, wedge yourself in, hang on, that's how you land the balloon. <laughs> Nowadays, we've got so much power in these things, you can drop six, eight, nine hundred foot a minute down to the ground, and at 200 foot off the ground, hit those burners, stop on a dive. As I like to say, I learned to fly balloons back in the days when ballooning was dangerous and sex was safe. But yeah, there's, there's no doubt it's difficult to hide my passion. You know, this is something that I fell in love with as a child. And, or had a woman call up, and she says, I need to schedule a balloon flight. And I said, sure. How many in the party? She says, two of me and my husband. Got all the details, and I said, listen, I'm kind of weird. Why did you say need? She says, well, my husband's been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and they've given him about six months to live, and he has always wanted to fly in a plane. That's been his lifelong dream. So we went out, we flew the flight, had an absolute ball. You could never tell looking at this guy. Get a call from her about six months later. She says, we're coming back. I said, really? Yep, he's had chemo, and they've had some progress with it, and he's not doing bad, and, and he has not shut up once about the balloon flight. So they came back and we flew again. And of course, I'm telling all the jokes and stuff, and the poor guy is in the corner cringing because he, he knows it's coming. Well, about four months later, we get another call from her. He's still doing okay. He's had a little bit of a relapse, but hasn't shut up about the balloon flight. She says, we gotta come do this again. And she's laughing because she wants to come too. And we fly the flight, and this time, I'm telling the jokes and he's telling the punchlines. And we are in tears laughing so hard. I get a call from her about six months later. We're coming back. I said, really, how's he doing? He's gone, but I have a request. Do 
she wanted to spread his ashes from blue. She said, I swear to God, I got a year and a half longer with him because he was looking forward to that next blue flame. And so we went out in the swamps with three balloons, one up high, two down low, and spread his ashes in the swamps. Yeah, no, this is, this is something you have the opportunity to change lives. And that is such a privilege. And people don't realize that you're creating a memory or an experience that they will share with friends and family forever. And by God, that's a huge responsibility. So we do everything we can to make it perfect. I look at it this way. How many people do you know get out of bed at 3.30 in the morning every day and look forward to it? Hot air ballooning is one of the most magical endeavors that mankind continues to embark on. An Irish priest over a hundred years ago summed it up with a fantastic prayer, and it goes like this. The winds have welcomed you with softness. The sun has blessed you with its warm hands. You have flown so high and so well that God has joined you in your laughter and set you gently back again into the loving arms of Mother Earth. <laughs>